All right, here we are, the quarterfinal match number four between Guillaume and Sylvain. Guillaume on the left, Sylvain on the right. Now, Guillaume is our sponsor with MTG World. His website is mtg-world.com. Both Guillaume and Sylvain, as you may be able to guess, are French. They may be at a slight disadvantage here playing with old English cards. But I would hope that they know what these cards do. Well, you know, I've found that a lot of times collectors tend not to play very much. Mm, that's true. I certainly haven't played very much, or at least recently. I see some mountains and and islands in Guillaume's hand. Looks like we have a we have cat warriors and is that a copy artifact in Sylvan's hand? So you got a forest. All right, so both players have elected to keep their opening hand, and a forest from both sides. It doesn't look like Sylvan has access to any blue mana at this point. Or but any other color. But he's got a bunch of blue cards in his hand. That's pretty unfortunate. And he just drew another blue one. All right, triple forest. What do we have here? We got a cat warriors coming down. It's a 2-2 it's a two, two for 3 with forest walk. Not bad against an opponent that has a forest. Or all forests. <laughs> well, it has forest walk, not forest rampage. All right, looks like a mountain's coming down. And what do we have? Looks like a basalt monolith. And that's pretty quick mana ramp right there. Yep, next turn he could potentially have seven mana available so, to him. Basalt Monolith is an artifact for three mana. Uh, it's a mono artifact, meaning that you must tap it. So three tap, or sorry, you tap it to get three mana, and it costs three to untap it. And it doesn't untap as normal during uh, the untap phase. So Savan just played a giant turtle. So this is a two four for three that can only attack every other turn. Now, unlike modern cards with this sort of effect, the giant turtle actually does untap even after it attacks. It's just not allowed to attack on the next turn. All right, so Guillaume does have access to seven mana. So he's tapping six. And we've got an Obsianus go Golem. So this is a four six for six. That's a pretty powerful and efficient beater for this format. Yeah, I mean, hard to kill something with a six, but Let's see, Sylvan's got four blue cards and a craw worm, and which costs six mana. Doesn't look like he even has a... Uh, so he gets in there for the second time, and now uh, Guillaume's down to 16. But it doesn't look like he has another land. Of course, Guillaume doesn't have the option of blocking a forest walker. Making sure he can't untap his Basalt Monolith. Good for him. We have definitely seen in previous matches the danger of not actually reading your cards. Well, Guillaume's got two islands in his hand. I bet Sylvan would take a couple of those. Not playing him, though. I guess he doesn't want to give away his uh, third color. Uh, so here he's tapping five for a moss monster. This is a 3-6. Old mossy. We're seeing a lot of moss monsters this tournament. Well, he's pretty good. Getting in there for four, so it puts Sylvan down to 16. 16. There we go. There's another color for, for Sylvan, although I don't believe he has any red cards in his hand. So probably not the color he was looking for. Gets in for two more. 
He ohms down to 14 at this point. Looks like he just played his first island. Gets in for seven. So if Sylvain doesn't block, he'll be down to nine. Looks like he did not block. Guillaume tapping some more mana for his own giant turtle. Another blue card off the top for Sylvain. That's pretty unfortunate. You can tell by his body language that he seems pretty frustrated. Now what is that in Guillaume's hand? It's a blue card. Looks like a blue elemental blast. Interesting to have that main deck, but I guess red is a very powerful color in this format. <laughs> Guillaume holding the blue elemental blast up to the camera and pointing at it. Two more. Guillaume down to 12. And he untaps his Basalt Monolith at the end of Sylvan's turn. He's just got an absolute glut of mana here. Yeah, he has about 10. Truly an embarrassing amount of riches here. He's getting in, in, uh, getting in there with the team. That'll be nine damage if Sylvan doesn't do something about it. So it looks like he blocks the giant turtle with the giant turtle, but he could have blocked the moss monster and taken one less damage. Yeah, that is true. So he's down to two now. Uh, because he took seven from the moss monster and the golem. And Yom uh, throws down a hornet cobra, which is a 2-1 first strike for three. Looks like Sylvan just drew a lightning bolt. Since Guillaume's turtle can't attack next turn, Sylvan does have the resources he needs to survive one more turn. Pass his turn. And. Looks like Guillaume's checking the wording on Giant Turtle just to make sure that it does untap. Yeah. It does. He's going to send. He's going to send in this team other than the creature that can't attack. So let's see. We know Sylvan has a lightning bolt here. He can block the golem and the moss monster and then bolt the hornet cobra and live another turn. Seems like his only play, but even with that play, it doesn't look like he's going to last too much longer in this game. And of course, there is always that card that Guillaume was gleefully pointing to in his hand that does play particularly well against Lightning Bolt. Yeah, it looks like the, the game is going to end uh, right here. Well, it doesn't look like he really wants to use a lightning bolt on that Hornet Cobra, but I guess he's forced He's to. really trying to find some way out of this predicament. And he found the answer. Unfortunately, Guillaume has a stronger answer. And the Hornet Cobra gets in for the final two. So, you know, that block earlier in the game did actually make a difference. So well, I would have lasted he Sure, he would have lasted another turn, but I don't think he would have changed the result of the game. Probably not, but... Um, there definitely are games where a one-turn difference can change the outcome of a game. Anyway, I've gone ahead and fast-forwarded through several minutes of shuffling. Here we are towards the start of game two. All right, it looks like Sylvain has two islands, but no mountains or forests. So, so it looks like Guillaume is keeping, and Sylvain is uh, taking a mulligan.
Didn't look like a thorough shuffling right there. I'll be sure and alert the judge. See a wall of wonder, some islands, and... We're going to five. All right. Yeah, I guess you should have shuffled a little bit better. You know, this doesn't happen in Monopoly. Sylvain is a little bit more thorough with his shuffling this time around. Let's see if it has the desired effect. That looks like five lands to me, but at least he's got all three of his colors. Five lands. <laughs> five lands. Right, that's, a, that's a pretty nice scry where you get to draw the card. Yeah, not all of the players were familiar with the modern scry rules, but uh, we got them squared away. The real question is, do you keep Disintegrate on top? Uh, probably. Lenoir Elf from Guillaume. Pretty scary, but vulnerable to that Disintegrate. I would probably use it right now, considering I have no other action in my entire hand. Yeah, just slow Guillaume down a little bit. What does he have? Uh, turn two Hornet Cobra, so this is a 2 1 first strike for three. And so on, just drew another land, it seems like. Yep, still looking at a hand of nothing but lands and a disintegrate, I think. Guillaume's got quite a few lands himself. And I think I saw a regrowth as well. Lucky for a Sylvain, Guillaume doesn't really have the cards he needs to punish a slow start. Swings in for three, taking Sylvain down to 17. Always a sad day when you're attacking with a Lenoir Elf, rather than using it to accelerate out a fatty. And plays a Lay Druid. Uh, this is a 1-1 one, one for three that you can tap to untap a land. So that's any land, not just a forest. It looks like Sylvan just drew a Wheel of Fortune. I might consider just playing that, considering uh, I have nothing but lands in my hand. Now, if he, now if he would have used that Disintegrate earlier, that would have been more value for him. Oh, absolutely. Now he may just end up discarding it. I mean, a Wheel of Fortune, when, whenever you've mulligan, is a pretty good way to, to even out the board. Or even out number of cards. Mm hmm Though, unfortunately for Sylvan, Guillaume would probably like nothing better than to get a new handful of gas. Sylvan's also probably a little bit reticent to pull the trigger on that Wheel of Fortune before he gets a chance to disintegrate a high-value target. And he just passes. Now, Guillaume's got four damage on board, and that uh, definitely starts adding up. And he swings with the entire team, putting Sylvan down to 13. And the Salt Monolith. That Wheel of Fortune just gets scarier and scarier. Sylvan plays his fifth land. Let's see what he does with it. Crucially, that fifth land was a second island, enabling him to cast a Wall of Wonder. So this is a blue wall from Legends. It's a 1-5 for four mana. And uh, it is a wall. It has Defender. And you can pay two and two blue uh, to give it plus four, minus four until end of turn and have it lose Defender at the same time. So right now this Wall of Wonder can actually, uh, it, it just holds back Guillaume's entire team since uh, all of his creatures have one toughness. It was a pretty great top deck, all things considered. A sixth land for Sylvan here. 
In his hand, he's got a land, a wheel of fortune, and a disintegrate. He's tapping some mana. It looks like he's activating the Wall of Wonders ability and attacking with it. This is a very questionable play. And Guillaume doesn't block it and takes five. Um, he could have just blocked it with the Hornet Cobra and killed it for free with the first strike damage because now the wall has, a, has one toughness. There's definitely some sort of confusion here. Maybe Guillaume thinks the wall has flying. Yeah, uh, so it's Guillaume swings back for four. So Guillaume's at 15 and Sylvain's at 9 now. But definitely a questionable play last turn, both pumping and attacking with the wall and the failure to block with the first striker. It looks like Guillaume had a Azura Drake in his hand, but he didn't have a blue to be able to cast it. He could have generated as much as 11 mana, but none of it blew. Sylvain reaching for a lot of mana. He's got two of every color, seven mana total. There's not a whole lot he couldn't cast in this situation. And down comes the Crawl Worm, a 6-4 for six. Yeah, I would have just opted to uh, use the Disintegrate on something last turn and then, you know, get value out of my Wheel of Fortune. Uh, even though... Uh, <coughs> So uh, Guillaume has a lot more cards in play. Seems like he's actually falling behind because he just has a bunch of one toughness creatures and drawing a lot of lands. Now if he's got something like a Disintegrator or a Fireball in his deck, then he's definitely got a potentially game-winning top deck. Sylvan, with another interesting play, he opts to put a regeneration on the Wall of Wonder instead of the Craw Worm. That's a bit of a strange decision. He also pumps the Wall of Wonder one more time and attacks with it. Oops. Now, Guillaume could also have just blocked this for free with the Hornet Cobra because once the first strike happens and you regenerate it, then uh, the wall would be removed from combat, so... Uh, I guess maybe Guillaume thinks that the wall has flying or something like that. It, it definitely does seem like there's some confusion there. It may be just based on looking at the picture, he thinks it has flying or it gains flying. It looks like uh, Guillaume finally uh, got an island, so he plays the Zero Drake, so this is a 2 4 flyer for 4 mana. I have to go back to this regeneration play. It seems so peculiar not to put it on the Craw Worm. Crawworm is a much stronger attacker. You don't have to pay mana t to attack with it. Yeah, and the wall can just sit back and hold hold back his entire team. While the Crawworm picks off chump blockers one by one. Yeah, I mean, maybe he, he didn't even need to put the regeneration on anything. So this Azure Drake breaks the stalemate to some extent because now Guillaume has a creature that Sylvan can't block, and he has the life lead narrowly. It looks like he just drew a Pendlehaven, and he's reading his own Pendlehaven, but he doesn't have any one ones. Sylvain's taking some time to figure out his next move here. Perhaps he's coming to regret putting regeneration on that wall. I don't think shuffling around his lands is going to make much of a difference, though. Sylvain's really giving Todd a run for his money here. Pumps his Wall of Wonder one more time. Not really pump, but just swap the toughness and uh, power. And attacks. 
All right, so we can again get a free block in with that Hornet Cobra. All right, looks like he finally figured it out. Yep, that Cobra has lethal first strike damage. Now Sylvan's going to have to spend money regenerating the wall if he doesn't want to lose it. Seems like they're having a discussion about what's actually happening here. Uh, he's going to regenerate it, I, I assume. Yep, the Wall of Wonder regenerates and is removed from combat. And the Hornet Cobra survives. Another land, not at all what Guillaume was looking for from his deck there. A near limitless supply of mana here on Guillaume's side of the table. He swings in with his flyer, taking Sylvan down to seven. Yeah, he has 12 mana in play. Sylvan's still sitting on a Wheel of Fortune and a Disintegrate in his hand. Looks like he's shuffling about some of his lands again. Maybe thinking about casting something? That's five mana total he's tapping. Disintegrate. Ooh, cool. And Guillaume has the blue elemental blast for that disintegrate pointed at the Azure Drake. That is truly unfortunate. But you know, when you main deck a card like Blue Elemental Blast, sometimes you'll roll high and get an opponent that plays red. Yep. And it looks like he should have used that Disintegrate again early on. <laughs> Before Guillaume had a chance to draw the Blue Elemental Blast. But of course, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Like two coming in the air. Dropping Sylvan down to five. And to add insult to injury, Guillaume has a Grey Ogre. A 2-2 two, two for three. I can't help but wonder how this game might have gone had that Crow Worm been able to attack with regeneration every single turn. All right, looks like uh, Sylvan just drew an unsummon, so looks like he might unsummon this Azura Drake and use the Wheel of Fortune to force him to discard it. Now, this is interesting because Guillaume has 12 or 13 mana in place, and he's quite mana flooded, so it seems like he could potentially draw into a lot of gas here. Seems like the Wheel of Fortune's a little better for Guillaume than it is for Sylvan. Well, it's probably comparable. But it seems like Guillaume has nothing but his small creatures in play. Wheel of Fortune, of course, causes both players to discard their hands and then draw a new hand of seven. So the fewer cards you had when you cast the Wheel of Fortune, the more of a benefit uh, looks you like get. looks like Guillaume is pretty happy with this draw. He's got a Crawl Worm, Earth Elemental, Ancestral Recall, a Lightning, lightning Bolt, bolt uh, and a Land, and some other cards, but uh, it looked pretty gas to me. Sylvan, on the other hand, has a Flight, a Forest, a Mountain, a couple other things I can't quite identify. But Guillaume seems pretty happy with his hand. And it looks like he's showing it to everyone. Uh, except Sylvan, of course. Or maybe he, he, he probably doesn't even care right now. No doubt, pretty stoked about getting the chance to cast that Ancestral Recall that he opened up not even a day before. Well, Sylvan once again taking his time here. He's got a brand new hand of seven cards to consider. Lots of options to think about.
Okay, he's reaching for some lands. Something may just be happening here. Seems like an okay play. Just give your 6-4 evasion. At least he didn't put that on the wall, too. And what is that? A giant turtle. Gets in there for four with uh, the crawl worm. Six. Oh, for six. You're right. So that should put Guillaume down to four. Guillaume down to four? Oh, that's right. He took ten with uh, from the Wall of Wonder that he shouldn't have. Mistakes were made. But Sylvana's at five, so... He's in a bit of trouble considering how many creatures Guillaume can attack with and what Guillaume has in his hand. Yep. And he has the mana to cast that Lightning Bolt and Ancestral Recall at the end of Sylvan's turn, should he want to. Guillaume picks out a card and reaches for blue mana. So in step, he's going to Ancestral Recall? <laughs> Showing it to everyone? Not targeting Sylvan. He drew a red card there, possibly a burn spell. I couldn't quite see what it was. Alright, I'm pretty sure that's an Obsianus Golem that Guillaume just drew. Sylvan's got three blockers for Guillaume's four attackers, so unless that red card can go face or get rid of a blocker, I don't think Guillaume's in Alpha Strike territory yet, despite still holding that lightning bolt. Looks like Guillaume's him. wondering how he's going to deal with that craw worm. So it looks like he's got an immolation. He's probably going to immolate it and then lightning bolt to follow up. Now if he if he had that regeneration on it, it would be a different story, but I guess he doesn't have any mana open anyway, right? Okay, so that is an immolation. Bit of a misplay here from Guillaume. If he had cast that on the cat warriors instead... Sylvan would only have two blockers remaining, meaning if Guillaume swung with the entire team, Sylvan would take a minimum of two damage from the attack, leaving him with only three life, meaning the lightning bolt would then be lethal. And down comes his own crawl worm. And still five mana open. Looks like a moss monster, maybe? No. Uh, Segovian Leviathan, so this is a 3-3 island walk. And it also essentially puts uh, Sylvan, Sylvan on a uh, two-turn two clock. clock. So if you look at the Segovian Leviathan art, it has whales swimming around it, except it's much larger than the whales. Yet somehow it's only a 3-3. I'd be interested in learning the lore behind that. Yeah, you would think whales would be, uh, you know, pretty sizable and yeah. something that's 20 times as big as a whale would be sizable itself only 20 times All right, what do we have here one red man it looks like the top card in sylvan's hand is a winds of change so that's a sorcery that uh, each player discards his hand and draws the number of cards that he originally held, right? Or no, it shuffles his, his hand into his library and then draws the number that he originally held. So here we go. We're shuffling and redrawing one more time. Can Sylvan find the magic bullet to get him out of this situation? Or will Guillaume simply draw into enough burnt spells to finish the game as soon as he untaps? Some quick shuffles and cuts from both players. I hope they both remember how many cards they had when they started. Looks like a black vice. I can't quite tell what all the cards in 
Sylvan's hand are, but it doesn't look like any of them will really help him out in this situation. Regardless, I'm sure both players are going to spend a good amount of time looking at their new cards and figuring out a new plan of action. Guillaume doesn't seem nearly as excited with his new hand this time around, what with not having the likes of Lightning Bolt and Ancestral Recall in it. Looks like Guillaume had a handful of lands and a Dark Horde Boars. Well, he's got more than enough creatures to... To deal lethal next turn? To deal lethal next turn. Let's see, we have one, two, three blockers. So you have three, so you only need to do two more. Yep, looks like it. Hopefully Guillaume will find the lethal this time. All of this waiting is pretty torturous. Sylvan's so still considering his options, but... If Guillaume had just one more card in his hand, uh, Sylvan could potentially have lethal here. He could attack for two with the Forest Walking Cat Warriors, then play the Black Vice. And then if Guillaume couldn't get rid of a card before his upkeep, he would take two damage. He doesn't have any mana untapped either. Down comes the Black Vice. This is certainly a nail-biter. Admittedly, because Guillaume took a ton of damage that he shouldn't have, but um, he will finish the game at one life. So it puts Guillaume down to two. And he scoops it up before Guillaume takes a turn, and that's the match. There were some plays, there were some misplays, but Guillaume advances to the semifinals. Another shout out to Guillaume and MTGWorld.com for sponsoring this awesome event. And don't forget to click subscribe.